All right, thank you very much. So, my name is Adam DeConnick. I'm part of the Data Center Systems Engineering team at NVIDIA. Um, and today I'd like to talk a bit about some of the work we've done with uh, DDN's Exascalar Systems on our latest uh, supercomputer, EOS. So, a little bit about my team, because I'm so proud of my team. So, the Data Center Systems Engineering team at NVIDIA is the team that designs and builds our um, uh, high-scale HPC and AI systems from the ground up with the earliest possible hardware. Um, we designed this for speed of light AI performance, as well as being good at just about anything else that we can try to do. Um, our team is the one that built the Celine supercomputer that was uh, debuted on the top 500 list in June 2020 at number five with about 63 petaflops uh, HPL, um, making use of DDN AI 400X storage, uh, as well as DGX A100 systems. Um, and uh, we just recently uh, released our new system, EOS, uh, makes use of NVIDIA DGX H100 and uh, Mellanox NDR InfiniBand. Uh, bumped up to the next generation on the DDN storage to the AI 400X2, and debuted on the top 500 list at number nine with 121 petaflops HPL performance, so just about 2x of what we saw on Selene. Um, our team is really great and uh, you know, includes experts from the data center level to the application level to networking and, of course, storage. Um, and these are, you know, I'm going to be presenting a lot of work that my team did, um, so I just want to call that out. So to start out, I want to talk a bit about how we do our storage on EOS. So um, we build our super pods in a hierarchical fashion so that we can deploy in sort of a cookie cutter fashion uh, using scalable units so that we can deploy incrementally and build up to high scale. So we start with 32 node scalable units. Those go up to 128 node pods that we uh, talk about in terms of where we land in our network hierarchy. And then we deploy multiple pods in order to scale up as far as we can go. Um, so uh, in terms of our compute and storage InfiniBand fabrics, we have separate non-blocking NDR InfiniBand fabrics for both types of system. Uh, these are both three-level fat tree topologies. Uh, and we use uh, leaf spine groups that are local to the pods. So that's our sort of unit of network deployment. And we link our pods together with core switches. Uh, EOS is built uh, with five pods. There are four shown here. Um, and we spread out our storage throughout the pods in order to get a good balance of our ports and networking. So we have 48 AI400X storage appliances connected with HDR InfiniBand into this fabric. Um, and the appliance IB connections, as I said, are interleaved across four of our five pods. Um, that's mostly because pod five was built sort of incrementally after that, and we already had our full set of storage there. But we also preserve the ability to add more storage later should we need it for either performance or capacity reasons. Um, our target with EOS was to get a minimum performance of two terabytes per second in, ter in terms of our read performance in order to support deep learning training at scale. Um, I think we can get a bit higher than that, but like that was our design point. Um, so, when we build these systems, we instrument our clusters extensively at the data center level, the node level, the network uh, level, and all different software levels from the performance, uh, the behavior of the scheduler, the behavior of our network management systems, and the behavior of the applications themselves. Um, and we do that so that we can observe exactly what's going on at all levels of our system, which is really crucial, especially when you're bringing up new technologies. Um, for our parallel system, we uh, get, uh, for, for our parallel storage, I should say, we get a ton of telemetry built using the DDN SFA API in order to collect system metrics and export them to our monitoring system, which is based on Prometheus and Grafana, standard open source monitoring system, and it all integrates together. Um, we measure fine-grained I.O. performance of the individual storage targets in our system so that we can understand exactly how things perform, catch any bottlenecks, catch any issues with the network, um, and validate that we reach our performance goals, which is exactly what we did on a real DL workload that we ran a few weeks ago um, as part of some testing. Uh, we validated that we got two terabytes per second uh, on running an actual DL training job. So that is exactly what we were looking for when we designed the system. So uh, DL training is a very read intensive process. And the reason for this is that the, um, we have very large data sets that are hosted on the network storage. These are data sets that are, that are generally too large to cache completely on the node. 
um, and the data may be reread re by many GPUs across the system and may be reread many times over the course of a single job. So if you think about how deep learning training works um, in a data parallel fashion, we, spit up, we split up the data across many nodes on the system and train our model in order to determine the correct weights over the course of this time. And so what we do is we actually like split up the data, we perform our deep learning training on a mop, on a node by node basis, we calculate those parameters um, and calculate lo local gradients, and then we do an all reduce operation so that every node exchanges um, its weights with every other node, um, and that is communicated across the entire system, and then we do it again in the iterative process in order to train our model. Um, there is a lot of read, um, a, a lot of data reading going on in this, and so we want to make sure that that performance is as high as possible. So we spend as little time as possible on the I/O and as much time as possible actually doing the compute. So in order to help with this, we make extensive use of the DDN Hot Nodes feature, which is based on the persistent client cache uh, system in the Lustre file system. Um, and what we do, so our DGX H100 nodes include 30 terabytes of local NVMe storage, and we allocate about half of that to the uh, hot nodes feature in order to dynamically build a cache of the data that's being read. The other half of that is sort of a static cache for some frequently used data that we see across many different jobs. Um, but we make heavy use of the, of the hot nodes feature because this is a system that um, we, we know that we have different data sets across the many different jobs that we run on this system. So as files are read from the parallel storage, they're cached locally as on our NVMe, and the repeated reads um, that may happen within the course of a uh, job will, uh, in many cases, go to the local cache as opposed to going back to the parallel storage, which, which speeds things up substantially and also reduces the congestion on our network so that we can run multiple jobs across the system at the same time and not worry about them interfering with each other. Uh, the files are expunged from the local cache on a least recently used basis um, so that hopefully over the course of a job we hit the cache as frequently as possible. I do want to note that uh, Hot Nodes does support write caching. That's not something that we see as critical for the AI workloads that we are running on EOS. Um, and because that feature is new and because we have a lot of new technologies involved in this system, we sort of minimize risk by disabling anything that we don't actively expect to use. But our configuration is flexible enough that we expect at some point we will turn on write caching in order to explore how that can improve our performance. So uh, looking at this in terms of the experiment, so this is a uh, set of runs that we did with the hot notes feature turned off. And uh, the orange uh, orange uh, graph here that you can see is the uh, read that we're doing um, over our InfiniBand fabric. So you can see that, for example, as we start to uh, run a training job, we are reading data over the InfiniBand fabric across the entire course of the job. Um, we go through that. We drop OS caches, just like the standard file cache that you get in uh, Linux memory, and we do it again, and we see exactly the same behavior. We're reading data all throughout the course of the job. Now, if we turn hot nodes on, what we see is that our initial iteration of running our training does continue to read over the network, but we're also writing to our local RAID as uh, the caching is taking place. So, over the course of the job, we do that. We allow a little bit of time for the write to the local cache to complete asynchronously. And then when we rerun that job, you'll see that almost no uh, traffic is done. We see almost no read, excuse me, over the InfiniBand. It all goes to the local cache. And that is incredibly useful because that takes load off of our storage system on the network. And we can do other things with that um, across the rest of the cluster. So I want to call out the fact that our team is doing some ongoing development um, in collaboration with DDN. In particular, one thing that we've been doing that's uh, particularly interesting is uh, doing cross-realm Kerberos support in the Lustre file system in order to integrate with Microsoft Active Directory for account management. And this is really important, especially for the security folks and the people who uh, care about compliance at NVIDIA, because they want to make sure that we can tie not just logins on the system to an individual user, but actual reads and writes on the storage system and know exactly who's doing those. Um, and uh, 
Aurelian Dagramont on my team did a great talk um, earlier this year on doing this uh, system and the development work that he did in collaboration with DDN. And I highly suggest you take a look at that. Um, Kerberos is a complex system, um, but it's really interesting and cool that we're able to do that. We're also obviously continuing to explore future improvement future performance improvements in collaboration with DDN, including upgrades to the network and continuing to configure uh, hot nodes and PCC for the best performance that we can get. And that's it. Here we go.